हेलो जी असल वेलकम बैक टू फाथान एक शुमी देखिए आप सब ठीक होंगे सलाम नेपाल क्या हाल चाल है तो भैया आज हम रिएक्शन देने वाले हैं रिक्वेस्ट वीडियो के ऊपर और इसका नाम है वाई कटमंडू द कैपिटल ऑफ नेपाल इस वीडियो के ऊपर ऑलरेडी काफ़ी सारे यूट्यूब चैनलों ने रिएक्शन दे दिया है बट हमारे पास रिक्वेस्ट आया तो हमने बोला चलो इस पर रिएक्शन देते तो स्टार्ट करते हैं वीडियो का टाइटल है वाई कटमंडू इज़ द कैपिटल ऑफ नेपाल हिस्ट्री बताएंगे इसमें एंड पसंद आती है तो लाइक शेयर कर सकते हैं और जो वीडियो का लिंक डिस्क्रिप्शन में सो चेक इट आउट करें एंड साथ में मेरा ब्लॉग चल गए तो देख सकते हैं आप This is Gorkha, a small municipality in Nepal. Gorkha. According to the 2011 census, it had a population of 50,000. This is Kathmandu. It is the capital city of Nepal. In 2011, it had a population of 1 million. Just from the aerial images of these two places, we can see a lot of difference between the two. Compared to Gorkha, Kathmandu is packed with concrete buildings, roads, and people. Satellite images show Kathmandu as a blot of grey surrounded by green. Gorkha, on the other hand, has hardly any grey spots, a testament to how little infrastructure has been built here. Now, obviously, one is the capital of our country, while the other seems like it's barely even a town. But Gorkha was once the starting point of a unification campaign that would give rise to the modern-day Nepal, a campaign that would unite numerous fractured kingdoms into a country that could resist the British Empire. The reason Kathmandu is the capital of Nepal is intertwined with the story of how this small kingdom rose to be able to withstand a global superpower, and this story starts with this man. This is Prithvi Narayan Shah, the first king of the kingdom of Nepal. But before he was the king of Nepal, he was but a ruler of this small town of Gorkha, which was then known as the Kingdom of Gorkha. In 1743 AD, he set out on a campaign to unify small kingdoms around Gorkha. He started with Nuwakot, Kirtipur, Makwanpur, and Chokot. But when he reached Kathmandu, he did something strange. He decided to proclaim himself as a monarch of the Kingdom of Nepal, centralize this region for future conquest, and not his own kingdom of Gorkha. More than 250 years later, the Shahs no longer rule Nepal. Today, it is a federally parted and democratically ruled republic. But Kathmandu still remains Nepal's capital. The city has seen unprecedented growth over the years and remains the most infrastructurally developed city in the whole country. While Gorkha has receded to a footnote in history. This really made me curious. What was so special about this city that it compelled Prithvi Narayan Shah to choose Kathmandu to be the capital of his country over his birthland of Gorkha? The reasons why any city is chosen to be the capital is generally a mixture of political, infrastructural, economical, and historical compromise. London became the capital of the English dynasties as administrative buildings were built in the area which lay at a favorable point in the river Thames with prior infrastructure having been built by the Romans centuries before for the conquering Shah dynasty the choice between a relatively sparsely populated land such as Gorkha and the verdant naturally defensible and strategically central land of Kathmandu valley was an obvious one Even before the conquest under the Shah dynasty, Kathmandu Valley was home to the Nevars and the dynasty of Mughal kings and was called by foreigners as Nepal, Sanskritized word for Neva, which is what the inhabitants call themselves. Far from its current borders, medieval Nepal occupied much less territory in every direction than its early modern and modern counterparts. The origins of this state prior to the Mughal kings and the Lichavis are shrouded in mystery. The only records we have of during that period is in the Vamsavali, which are chronicles that tell of the valley being a lake which was drained by either uh, the Hindu god Krishna or Bhoisatva Manjushri by opening a gorge to drain the water and allowing for settlements of the fertile alluvial plains. The Vamsavali cannot strictly be considered as a historical source because of its mixture of historical and mythological storytelling, but its text does hint towards the first ruling class of the valley being the Mahispals and Gopals, who were buffalo and cow herders. After the Mahispals and Gopals, the Kirans came into the valley. Documentation of these Kirans can be found even in the great epics of Mahabharat. John Cabral was a Jesuit priest and one of the first European travelers who came to Nepal in the 1600s. In accounts of his travel to Nepal, we can find the geographical importance of Nepal in connecting the Indian subcontinent to China. Cabral wanted to travel to China to spread Christianity, and on finding the route to Tibet via Nepal, he called it the gateway to the whole of Taradi, China, and many other pagan countries. His accounts also mention that the road through Nepal was perfectly safe and was used by many travelers. Accounts from Chinese travelers such as Monk Fa Xing and Monk Zhu Zhang 
during the Jintang dynasty also provide evidence of a continuous Nepali identity for the valley inhabitants from early periods. But why did this region turn into such a hotspot for settlers? Well, Kathmandu lies on an ancient lake basin. Historians propose that this is the same lake mentioned in the Manjushri mythos. The remnants of an ancient lake is the reason Kathmandu has a large fertile plain for sustaining a booming population. Besides the obvious benefits of good soil and relatively regular rivers, the valley lies in an important transit point between the two historically rich regions of the Indian subcontinent and the Chinese heartlands. The wealth of Kathmandu flowed from its commercial enterprise and tradesmen that worked between the two regions. Nepali work and craftsmen were prized notably in the 13th century AD, as evidenced by the emergence in the Yuan Chinese courts of the artist and architect Oraniko. Trade in the copper works, idols and statues flowed from chiefly the Kathmandu Valley, whose artisans and specialized workers were stratified in a caste system by the Mulla dynasty. The chief influential factor in the artwork and constructions of the people was the Buddhist influence. The valley was, during both the Lichavi and successively Mulla dynasty, a place where the wealth of the region was pooled and thrown into works of both public welfare and splendor. Sociocultural wealth for the city can be seen in the complexity of the artwork and architecture for the time periods, and the structures of that time that are still standing till date, although in repaired or reconstructed state. Works on temples and public water amenities such as springs help provide the urban texture of Kathmandu that is still viewable today. The old name for one of the cities of the valley, Kathmandu proper or Kashtam Mandav, comes from one of these public amenities, literally translating into wood-covered shelter. The three stories public shelter that was situated in Maru Kathmandu was a building made entirely of woodwork in the pagoda style, which was destroyed during the 2015 earthquake of Nepal and is currently under reconstruction. All this points towards the valley being a flourishing city with art, culture, impressive infrastructure long before unification under Prithinaran Shah. Throughout history, capitals are situated for varying reasons. Rome is a cultural heartland for the Italian people. London was the largest and most prosperous city in the British Isles when it became the capital of the English monarchs, and many other nations share important historical reasons for the situation of their capitals. For the unification of Nepal, at that time, the wealth and prosperity of the Kathmandu Valley, along with its pre-existing infrastructure and its defensibility, may be some of the reasons why it eventually became the capital. Without a doubt, the unification and successive modernization of the state of Nepal led to the deeper roots of centralization we see in the nation today. Though the recent adoption of federalism has in principle sought to change this, in practice a large contingent of the urbanized and wealthy classes, along with a disproportionate amount of infrastructure and resources, are still in Kathmandu. As such, people from all over the nation come to find employment and opportunities in the city. The valley, like it has ever been, is still a melting pot of cultures and travelers from every reach of the Himalayas. The valley is still mythologized to a certain degree as a haven for opportunities and monetary mobility with people flocking in from east and west. This mixing of people and cultures have sometimes led to disputes between the native Nevars and the people who have immigrated to the city about whom Kathmandu belongs to. But when the very city was built not by a single ethnic group but by centuries of mixing of different cultures, would it not be right to see that it belongs to all of us? We would like to thank senior historian Mr. Mahesh Rajpant for helping us out with this video. While we were interviewing him for this video, we learned a really interesting fact about Araniko. <laughs> अब इनको चाहिँ त्यो चाहिँ हो नेपाली नाउ चाहिँ त्यो भइसक्यो अ हाय माय नेम इज गौरव एन्ड आई एम अ भिडियो प्रोड्युसर एट ई कॉलेज दिस इज सोमेंस इज आवर एसोसिएट प्रोड्युसर अनि अ दिस इज यमन नाइ इज आवर ग्राफिक्स डिजाइनर एन्ड दैट इज अंकुर अ इज आवर प्रोडक्शन म्यानेजर वी हियर एट ई कॉलेज हैव अ गोल टू मेक रियली हाई क्वालिटी कंटेंट बट वी कैन नॉट डू दैट विदाउट योर हेल्प So if you like this video you can help us out by becoming a becoming our patron and on Patreon or by liking and sharing this video with your friends and family. And that's it for this time. I'll see you guys on the next one. देखो मैं अगर बात करूं इस चीज पे तो हर कंट्री की अपनी एक अपनी कैपिटल सिटीज होती है उसकी क्या बोलूं उसकी मतलब एक 
पहचान वो होती है पाकिस्तान की सबसे बड़ी सिटी जो जिसको कराची कहते हैं एक टाइम पे ये भी पाकिस्तान की कैपिटल थी बट कुछ रीज़न की वजह से इसको कैपिटल को हटा के इस्लामाबाद को भेजा गया तो इसी तरह नेपाल का भी जो लगता है एक नेपाल का तो देखो नेपाल की तो एक, एक जो सिटी है वो बहुत ज़्यादा बड़ी सिटी है कठमांडू जिसमें अकॉर्डिंग टू एक से डेढ़ करोड़ दो करोड़ लोग रहते हैं बहुत अच्छी बात है बट बात यह है कि भाई देखो अगर आपकी कंट्री में सारी चीज़ें एक एक ही सिटी में बहुत लोग जैसे इम्पोर्ट एक्सपोर्ट हो वहाँ पर वहाँ पर लोग घूमने फिरने के लिए आए टूरिस्ट प्लेस भी और सबसे मेन चीज़ वहाँ पे फॉरेनर्स बाहर के लोग की जो आए और घूम फिरे और उनके एम्बीसी वहाँ पे है तो मतलब बात ही एक ये कि कैपिटल बन सकता है इन्होंने एक एक तरीके से बताया कि हर जैसे कि लंदन है तो लंदन क्यों कैपिटल है फ्रांस का बताया हर कंट्री का एक तरीके से बताया नेपाल का बताया तो मुझे जहाँ तक लगता है एक पुराना आ, सिटी और पुरानी जगह होने की वजह से इसको जो है ना शायद इसको बनाया गया है कैपिटल और आ, वो अलग 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 बातें इनकी बातों पर मैं नहीं जाता बट मैं अपने ओन से और मैं अपने माइंड से सोचता हूँ कि यार एक पुरानी सिटी और लोगों की भीड़ भाड़ की वजह से ये कैपिटल सिटी है इस कैपिटल को दूसरी जगह भी शिफ्ट किया जा सकता है बट नहीं किया कराची पाकिस्तान के जैसे शिफ्ट किया वो अल्लाह जाने किस वजह से शिफ्ट किया वो आज तक मुझे नहीं पता चला बट वो अलग सेपरेट एक सिटी उसके लिए बनाई गई इस्लाम आबाद के नाम से एक सिटी बनाई ना वहाँ पर कुछ था कुछ भी नहीं था उसके लिए पार्लियामेंट हर चीज़ एक एक चीज़ जगह वहाँ के लिए ऐसे सेपरेटली एक सिटी बनाई और आज वो सिटी बहुत शानदार तरीके से है तो इसी तरह इन्होंने जैसे बताया तो बहुत बहुत अच्छा लगा मुझे ये वीडियो जिस जो फैक्ट्स उन्होंने बताया इस बेसिकली मुझे वो अच्छी लगी कि यार किस वजह से कैपिटल बनाया गया कौन कौन सी रीजनस थे हिस्ट्री भी बताई नेपाल की पृथ्वी नारायण शाह की हिस्ट्री में भी से इन्होंने बात की तो पृथ्वी नारायण शाह हिस्ट्री की भी बहुत सारे लोगों ने रिक्वेस्ट की है तो इन उस पर भी आएंगे बट जो वीडियो थी मुझे अच्छी लगी इसलिए मैंने रिएक्शन दिया एंड रीजंस भी बहुत अच्छे लगे सो so, पसंद आए हो आपको लाइक शेयर सब्सक्राइब कर सकते हैं आज के लिए इतने काफ़ी मिलते हैं नेक्स्ट वीडियो में तब तक के लिए अल्लाह हाफिज़